Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremton News at 6 tonight. I'm Mark Handrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. Thank you for being here. We begin tonight with new body cam footage from the night Gonzaga head basketball coach Mark Few was arrested for driving under the influence in Coeur d'Alene. He was cited for misdemeanor DUI that night and will serve a three game suspension. We asked for this footage because he is a public figure and we want to learn more about what happened in the moments before Few was arrested. We also wanted to see how the police report of Few's arrest lined up with what actually happened in the video. Kremtu's Ian Smay has been watching the footage today. We received more than three hours of body camera footage from the night Few was arrested and cited for DUI. It shows the entire incident from when police pulled Few over to when he was released from custody. Okay. After being pulled over, Few okay. first tells officers he hasn't had anything to drink. How much have you had to drink today? Not Nothing. After speaking with Few about his day on Hayden Lake with his family, the officers ask him to step out of his vehicle. He initially refuses. I'm actually step out of your car. Are your dogs going to jump out? Do you want to roll up the windows? No. Or roll them up halfway just so, so we know they're not going to jump out? No, I'm not going to step out. So. Uh, okay, well, you don't have a choice. After Few exits the SUV, the officers tell him they want to do an evaluation of him. He refuses, saying it's because of previous injuries and his feelings that the field sobriety test is subjective. So why don't you want to do the evaluations? Because I don't, even if I am standing here on one leg or two legs, it, it's up to, it's totally subjective and I don't tr trust subjective deals. Few goes on to admit he had drank during the day, but that he stopped hours ago. And you told me that you had nothing to drink? Earlier on, I had a couple beers, but I've been literally cleaning up the beach and doing everything. And when was the last time that you had a beer? Probably four hours ago. Four hours? Yeah. And you said you had a few beers today? No, I didn't. I said I had, I think I had one or two beers. Okay, so. so you had one or two beers. Last drink was four hours ago. Yeah. They detained Few for refusing the tests and put him in the back of a police vehicle. He's visibly upset. Few ends up taking two breathalyzer tests, during which he blows over the legal limit. So your two results were a .119 and a .120. All right, so like I said before, limit is .08, so you're above the limit. I placed you under arrest for DUI. After going to the hospital due to Few requesting a blood test, a sergeant so, explains why he's only getting a citation. Uh, the officer who you've been dealing with yeah. uh, does it, didn't know your name to the extent of who you are. And I'm not here about your case or what occurred or anything like that, sir. I got you, bud. What I stopped by for essentially was, hey, I'm like, he's a great guy. He's in Spokane. This guy's going. To, there's really no reason we need to book him probably in jail, so let's just give him a citation. In addition to his three-game suspension, Few was also fined $1,000 as part of his guilty plea. He also has to complete 24 hours of community service by February of next year, along with a year of unsupervised probation. Other penalties include an ignition interlock system on his vehicle, and his license was suspended for 90 days starting on October 6th. However, starting on November 5th, he will have temporary driving privileges in order to go to and from work. In the newsroom, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News. The Boise community is still reeling today after yesterday's tragic shooting at the Boise Town Square Mall. At least two people were killed after a gunman opened fire there, and we now know the gunman died of his injuries as well. Now, four others, including a Boise police officer, were injured shortly after officers arrived the, to shots fired there. Officers found a person matching the suspect's description, and that is when we're told there was a shootout that resulted in that police officer's injury. That officer has been treated and released. A couple of hours ago, the Boise Police Department confirmed the shooter, Jacob Bergquist, died at the hospital. He was listed in critical condition when he was taken there last night. The other two victims were identified as 26-year-old Joe Acker and 49-year-old Roberto Padilla Arguelles. Police say they have executed a search warrant related to the investigation. We did conduct a search warrant at a location on North Fry that is related to this investigation, although the evidence taken from that location is still being processed at this time. And there's really not a lot that I can provide in addition to that, other than that we have taken items of interest from that location. 
Now, police would not say if the location was a suspect's home. No motive has been determined yet, but police are hoping that his social media accounts will help give some clues. The family of Joe Acker, meanwhile, which is one of the victims, released this statement saying Joe has always been a hero. He was the type of person who always wanted to help people, and because of his heroics, they say many lives were saved. The Gun Violence Archive says this was the 585th mass shooting in America this year, and coming up later in the broadcast, we are hearing from people who witnessed the event firsthand. Washington Secretary of State Kim Wyman is now accepting a new job to lead the Biden administration's effort to protect future elections. She'll serve as senior election security lead for the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Wyman will work to make sure federal elections are secure. Wyman released a statement today writing in part, quote, I remain, remain committed to protecting the integrity of our elections and working closely with local and state elections officials nationwide to bolster this foundational pillar of our democracy. Unquote. Wyman's resignation as Washington Secretary of State will take effect on November 19th. Governor Jay Inslee will need to appoint a new Secretary of State who will serve until next year's general election. It was just loud and terrifying to hear everything just go down so quick. So some very scary moments at University High School yesterday when a team of sheriff's deputies rushed into an art class. They were responding to a report of a teenager with a gun at school. University High School staff called deputies after a student reported seeing a freshman put a gun in his backpack. Deputies say they found the gun and they say it was loaded. A 14 year old boy was arrested. Meantime, the district is praising the student who saw the gun and immediately said something. And in this event, um, that campaign, the see something, say something, uh, worked exactly as it was supposed to, where uh, another student saw something that was concerning to them and reported it immediately uh, to somebody that could uh, make a difference. The district's director of security says only about 10 to 15 minutes elapsed between the time when the student reported what he or she saw and officers actually securing the weapon, so they say they didn't need to go into lockdown. North Idaho College has a new interim president, their wrestling coach. Michael Sabali was named the new interim president by the Board of Trustees last night. Sabali came to the college back in 2019 as the head coach and as an instructor. He does have a doctorate in educational leadership from Southwestern University. He'll take over that position in two weeks. Meantime, the search for a new president, a permanent one, came after the board terminated previous president Rick McLennan's contract earlier or last month, rather. All right, we're going to take a quick break from headlines. Started out as a nice fall day. Certainly the sun was shining, but it turned into kind of a windy, rainy fall night. Yeah, let's get back out to meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Outdoor Weather Center. During our 5 p.m. broadcast, Thomas, you had the umbrella. I see you no longer have that. Yeah, that rain moved through pretty quickly. So it rained for about the better part of, let's say, about 20, 25 minutes or so. That rain already pushing on. The winds are still swirling around, and they've been kind of switching directions here recently, at least during our 6 o'clock broadcast. You can probably hear it on the microphone. Here's our Doppler radar. So the rain came through pretty much right at the top of our five o'clock broadcast past Spokane right now, still raining, just tapering off in Coeur d'Alene, but still moving towards sand points. So just progressing towards the north and east in our region. Here are these wind speeds up to 20 to 32 miles per hour throughout the afternoon hours, mainly as that rain just moved through. But even though the rain looks like it's finished for tonight, our next weather system probably offers even more rainfall overall, especially for our northern regions. Thankfully, no rain for this upcoming weekend, which bodes well for a dry trick or treat this upcoming Sunday. All right, thank you very much, Thomas. Well, if you are out and about around town, you may see some familiar faces at the local grocery store. We'll explain why big stars like Zoe Deschanel are right here in Spokane. Coming up. Plus, a little later, Wallace, Idaho has only one bank in town, but now that bank is set to close, leaving a lot of residents frustrated. We'll let you know what happens now.